Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode on the channel. I'm Dr. Nasser, a board certified internal medicine physician in the US, practicing right now as a hospitalist in the state of Florida. We're here with another video because open evidence is becoming viral in the field of medicine and AI, and it's overtaking certain tasks on chat GPT and also in competing with the up-to-date that we, the good old up-to-date that we've all been using over the last uh, few years. So let's really get into it and talk about them. ChatGPT don't really like to compare like this. It's like a medical student that you could train and have it produce knowledge that you need it versus open evidence is the fellowship trained already. You just have to pull the information from them properly. But it's a really a ChatGPT plus is a smart, multi-talented generalist AI, right? They said it, it creates generates information, it can web browse, it can create images, it can handle medical plus non-medical tasks versus open evidence is really trained exclusively on peer-reviewed medical literature from top journals, NAGM, JAMA, you name it. They're all going to be evidence-based medicine. So right here, you can tell the differences right away because you have, you're talking about a general AI tool versus something that's really trained on curated, peer-reviewed medical literature. So let's go to it with this table, makes it easy to see. General tasks, site content creation, web browsing, there for chat GPT plus versus point of care, clinical questions. Really focus on that. It's gonna be only used for that reason, is for point of care clinical questions that you wanna make sure the data is 100% fact and evidence-based. It will go directly link it to the paper on that open evidence. And you will, although you need to double check all AI work, in this case, you're not worried about ChatGPT where it's going to search the entire internet if you don't direct it how to pull the information. The other thing is it will not cite it unless you ask ChatGPT Plus to cite it. So really... ChatGPT Plus is a specialty. It doesn't have any specialty for its general medical. It can mix with non-medical and it can generate knowledge that doesn't exist. It's a generative AI tool versus the open evidence where it's only trained on those medical literatures that can answer medical only questions and the specialty content, okay? So the next thing we're going to talk about, again, open evidence always going to win with fast point of care kind of design that it has, evidence-based answers, direct citations, and the other thing I was going to say is free for verified U.S. providers. So whenever I was going on there to sign up for myself, all it did ask me was, okay, what kind of physician are you? Ask my NPI and let me use it for free. And it, you can earn CME credits just the way UpToDate will let you and will give you credits. And really UpToDate using it, you've seen, you'd have to use a certain facility or pay for it. But again, open evidence wins there. The other thing is up to date is adding a AI factor to it to be competitive. But again, the price is going to be the difference here. So that's that. Now, if you are doing a lot of writing tasks, summarizing papers, letters, creating slides, generating images and educational materials, you go to your ChatGPT Pro or Plus. You could use ChatGPT for all those general tasks. I still use them when I want to make sure, proofread some paper, the grammar, things like that. You could use it for really anything there, but you, there's no guarantee with ChatGPT, even after you instruct it, and I have a video on how to make your ChatGPT Plus suitable for a physician or a medical student or anyone in the sciences and that wants reliable information. But again, there's not going to be a guarantee that it will always happen the way you asked it to do. Now, really looking at breaking down complex medical concepts. ChatGPT Plus can break down things, explain concepts, and you can con conversate with it back and forth. You can copy and paste large bodies of text, pages and pages, and then it will help you break it down. It can pull from all of the knowledge on the internet. It's good for a broad kind of understanding, but... And when you look at open evidence, it's very grounded in the peer-reviewed stuff, only on the licensed journals, only on those. And it will give you the direct citations. It's only trained on medical literature and it speaks the language of a clinician. Okay, so very good for clinical accuracy and evidence-based. Again, I'm not paid by any of these sources. 
a completely independent review and uh, I'm just comparing open evidence versus chat GPT plus. And again, remember always with any AI tool, none of these are perfect. They're, they chat GPT can easily hallucinate. There are some things that can happen if you're using, you're asking clinical questions, one clinical question and try to extrapolate. You could misinterpret knowledge from open evidence. Always use your discretion and always do your due diligence when you pull from either of these and you're using it in your, to make your medical plan or use it in your physician practice. Always use your own judgment and verify the information. Most, most importantly, most, multiple sources are always better. If you're not sure, if you think an answer that you pulled from either of them doesn't make sense, put that answer into another tool or look on up to date, compare it as a way to make sure you minimize the risks of making mistakes. So again, using open evidence for clinical question, evidence-based answer, port of care decisions, quickly pull it up, look at those answers and chat GPT for other general tasks. And the best part of open evidence that even makes it more competitive than up to date is that it's free for healthcare professionals in the US. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. This was a really a quick video to compare and contrast really open evidence versus chat GPT and really tells you how to use each of the tools to better your practice as a physician. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please comment, subscribe, and I will be here with you again with more videos. I'll see you on the next episode.